Hello and welcome back. My name is Chris Parker with, that's right, parkerphotographic.com and this is chapter 10 of 12 for my free Luminar Neo course. In this Luminar Neo tutorial, you're gonna discover some advanced photo editing tips that will elevate your images to a whole new level. If you're ready, let's do it. All right, so the professional editing tools in Luminar Neo are going to provide some advanced editing techniques and tools to enhance and retouch your images. So let's check out Super Contrast first. So Super Contrast will target different tones in your image to increase the contrast in those tones. So we have highlights, midtones, and shadows. Underneath each one of those sliders, we have a balance slider which will allow you to pinpoint how much of those tones are targeted. So as I increase the highlights, watch the sky and notice how contrast is being added. And then with the balance tool, I can pinpoint how many of those tones are being targeted. The same applies for midtones and shadows. All right, so the color harmony tool is going to provide some options to precisely control the colors in your image. So let's start off with Brilliance, which is going to create a more rich type of color as you slide it to the right and to the left, those colors are going to become muted. The warm slider is going to control the color temperatures in the image and you can use this to stylize your image. So the positive values will warm up the image while negative values tone it down. Now, color contrast is going to allow you to target a color range and then apply the contrast to that color range. So what happens is any of those colors that are being targeted are going to be lighter and then any colors on the opposite of the color wheel are going to become darker, which creates the contrast. So it all starts with the amount slider. And as you increase it, it's going to increase the amount of contrast. And then the hue slider will allow you to target a range of colors. All right, next we have split color warmth. And this tool can enhance the cool and warm tones in your image selectively. So it's going to allow you to increase color contrast and vibrancy or create creative toning effects. So you can use them separately to adjust the warm colors and the cool colors in your image. So for example, in this image, we have warm colors in the highlights and the whites. In the shadows and the blacks, they tend to be cooler since they're not getting the color of light from the light source, in this case, the sun. So we can target those warm colors by dragging this slider to the left to neutralize those warm tones, such as the yellows and reds in the highlights. And then to the right, it's going to enhance them. Now for those cooler colors in those blacks and shadows, you're gonna drag this to the left to cool down the blues and the cyans in that part of the tonal range. And then to the right, you're going to neutralize and warm them up. All right, so the color balance tool is going to help you color correct your images. So let's say you have a color cast that is predominant in the shadows. Well, if you click on this menu here, we have shadows, midtones, and highlights, and shadows is selected by default. But if those colors are predominant in the highlights or the midtones, then you can target those tones instead and then adjust these sliders here accordingly to remove that color cast. All right, so dodge and burn is an old editing technique that we used to use back in the day when we did our own printing in a dark room. So dodge and burn refers to selectively targeting a part of the image to be darker or brighter. So dodge refers to making part of the image darker. Burn refers to making parts of that image brighter. In our digital world, we're going to apply this effect with a brush. So we're going to apply the dodging and burning to exactly where we want it in the image. And we have the brush, like I mentioned, and we can control the size from the slider, or you can use your right bracket key to make it larger, left bracket key to make it smaller. You can adjust the softness of the edge of the brush with softness, 
and I tend to like to have this right around 50 to 100, depending on the area that I'm targeting. And then strength is like an opacity slider. The lower the setting, the less that it's going to reveal or apply that effect to the image. Okay, so let's say I want to brighten up the Genesee River in this image. I'm gonna go ahead and drop my brush size down just a little bit. And then I'm just going to paint in this area to target my river. And because I have the Lighten tab selected right here, we are burning in that area or making it brighter. If I wanna make it darker and use the Dodge tool instead, I'm going to use the Darken tab. If I need to fine tune the area that I brushed, I can erase with the Erase tab. Now, if you find that the overall intensity of the edit is too much, you can use the amount slider to tone it down. All right, so the clone tool is going to provide another way to retouch your images. Unlike the other tools that we've talked about in previous tutorials about retouching, this one is not AI based. Instead, what it's going to do is it's going to clone or copy pixels to the area that needs to be retouched. So you need to tell Luminar Neo the target area where those pixels should be cloned from to cover up that blemish or whatever it is you're retouching. So you want to make sure that you're targeting in an area that is similar to the area being covered up. So we have our size, softness, and strength tools. And then when you hover over an area in your image, you're going to get this teeny tiny circle. So this is the tool that you're going to use to target an area to be cloned from. So let's say I want to retouch this blemish right here. Well, I should select this area as a target since these pixels are similar in color, texture, and contrast to the blemish. So I'm gonna click here once and then I get my larger brush and then I can adjust the brush accordingly. And I don't like to make it too big or too large. I like to make it just a little bit larger than the blemish. And then once I click on it, it should remove it automatically. So I can now continue painting over different areas. However, because the colors and the textures are different here versus here, I'm going to get something that looks a little bit darker than the area that I retouched. So we're going to undo that with Command or Control plus the letter Z, and we need to now reset the target area. And we can do that by holding down the Alt or Option key to get that targeting tool and then you can click in the new area to begin retouching the blemishes in that area. So just make sure you're resetting the target area every time you enter a new area with new colors, textures, and contrast. All right, to continue elevating your Luminar editing skills, check out this video tutorial next to learn how to use layers in Luminar Neo.